Okay, guys, so today's video, I'm going to just break down um, a lab panel that you can get done for $50 roughly. So these are the most important things you can look at, in my opinion, when trying to get a lab panel, get some blood work done. And so that's how I'm going to help you out with this video. I'm going to kind of break down everything. I just got blood work done a month ago. Some of it took a while to get in. I'll go through my blood work. So this is just over three years off anabolic steroids, off testosterone. So this is some interesting blood work because like I said, I came off testosterone and anabolic steroids in November of 2020. And obviously we are in 2024 now. So I guess it's actually almost closer to 30, 38 months. So, but this was done a month ago, December. So 37 months off everything. So I'm gonna break that down, but what you can get out of this video is what some of this stuff means. And I will show you a panel you can do for fairly cheap. Um, and I'll, I'll go into all that. So that's what I'm gonna do here coming up. I'm gonna get into the first part of it. So the first thing I wanna look at is, let's start off with the most interesting part. I'll get right down to the good stuff because I know you guys wanna see this. Total testosterone, LC slash MS. So this is 319. So 319 nanograms per deciliter is the total testosterone measure, which is somewhat low. Um, but to be honest, I feel that most people make way too big a deal out of testosterone levels. You can get pretty dang jacked with a suboptimal testosterone level. That's not to say that's a good way to thrive. Um, I wasn't on, I haven't been on any natural testosterone boosters or anything like that. So that would possibly raise it with Fidoja Agrestis and Tonkata Lee. I've taken them before they work. They boost me about a hundred points. Um, one thing to note though, I should put the caveat. The last two testosterone checks I got done with total testosterone was the last one was 494, I believe. And the one before that was 500. So there is fluctuation in testosterone levels depending on how much sleep you get the night prior, even the days prior, how hard you've trained in the days prior, what your diet has looked like, um, whether or not you're fasted, all this stuff. I was fasted for all of this. All of that can play a role and affect the levels. So there's a lot of different variables that can cause hormones to fluctuate. And that's why you have to view blood work as a snapshot in time. Um, it's one reason I like to get it done consistently every six months or so, because it allows me to accrue more data where I can look back on this over time and see patterns. So it's a snapshot in time, but if you keep getting it done consistently every six months or so, you can start to piece things together that are a problem or things you could improve on. So the last three testosterone panels, 500, 491, or 494, and then uh, 319 here. So it fluctuates, you can see that. Um, personally, I feel great. My energy levels are fantastic. I am putting on muscle clearly. Like you can see the developments in my physique through this more blended style of hypertrophy training along with strength. Um, I'm doing my current 12 week deadlift program, which I will release as soon as my website is launched. So I have made a 42 page ebook slash 12 week deadlift program that you can purchase you'll be able to in a month that's going to be up um, i'm running it right now i think it's a fantastic program i put a ton of work into that because i can only take on so many guys for coaching i, I limit my amount of coaching clients because it's much more involved i don't want to you know dumb things down i want to do a good job so this is just another way for me to offer um something for you guys to get stronger with deadlift so this is the the 12 week deadlift program is what i'm going to run to try to pull 683. I'm done with the first week, second week coming up starting on Friday. So that's fun. But the, in my honest opinion with, with testosterone, it affects strength more than it affects physique. You can get really, really freaking jacked with, like I said, semi-optimal testosterone levels. I feel it more in the strength. When my strength or when my testosterone levels are higher, I notice I can get stronger much easier. So I feel like testosterone and all that stuff has a bigger role in terms of strength. Now, you want to get the LC slash MS one done if you get your testosterone checked. It's just a more accurate uh, picture of what your testosterone actually is. There's a lot less vari variability. It's, it's the gold standard. So this test, as far as the testosterone, is $38. So it's a little pricier, but the other ones, it's not to say they're going to be way off, but they might be off by you know, 30, 40, 50 points on the other testosterones. There's one that's standard, it's like 12 bucks, but it's not quite as accurate. So I would recommend getting this one done if you wanna get your testosterone checked. 
Now let's move on here though. A1C, hemoglobin A1C, HbA1C, you also see it re reported as 5.3. This is a three month snapshot of your average glucose level. So it's your average glucose level averaged out over the course of three months, 5.3. That's a little high for me, to be honest. It still is obviously within range, but you can see on the last one from April, I was 4.9. I've been eating a little more relaxed lately with all the cardio I'm doing in preparation for this 100 mile race in June. So the A1C level crapped up a little bit and I'd like to get that below five again, but not the end of the world. Um, there's better metrics as far as checking your insulin sensitivity, which I'll get to coming up. Okay, the video cut off, but I'm gonna get back into this. So lipids, this is, this is getting into it. Triglycerides 59, that's a really good level. Triglycerides do show insulin sensitivity to a degree, so the lower you can get those, the better they're gonna be. And triglycerides are always gonna be better when you're fasted. So do not get this stuff checked if you're not fasted. You wanna be fasted, you're gonna get a much more accurate depiction of what your levels are at. Um, I'm really happy with the triglycerides. That shows a high degree of insulin sensitivity, quite frankly. HDL cholesterol, not as important anymore. They have shown that it doesn't really play a huge role in mortality. It, it doesn't affect your death rate to a high degree, but 67 is a really good number. Um, that's primarily up there from cardio. I've been doing a ton of cardio, as you guys know, and that's why that's so high. LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, so to speak, 92. So that's the lowest I've achieved ever without the use of any med uh, pharmaceutical intervention. And I'm not a believer in pharmaceuticals at all. I don't think the industry can be trusted in any way. I think it's very corrupt as we could go down a whole rabbit hole as far as that. But the, uh, yeah, I would never take, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to get too far down this, but I'm not going to deal with statins anymore or azetamibe or anything like that. I think you can get your LDL cholesterol and your lipids overall in check through proper cardio. So I do quite a bit of cardio and I brought my LDL down to 92. Um, lipids will be affected more through cardio than diet. This is the truth. I have all the anecdotal evidence. Um, diet changes do not touch them anywhere near the degree that cardio does. So that's an interesting note. Let's get into the important stuff though, the stuff that I would have all you guys. Okay, it keeps cutting off. We got a heck of a storm going through right now. Okay, red, white blood cells, this is gonna elevate when you're sick or when you have some kind of, your body's fighting something off. 5.5, you're typically gonna fall within the four to six range there. My red blood cells, hematocrit, hemoglobin, all that's fairly low. This is highly genetic. So 40 for hematocrit, 39.9. Um, ideally, I'd like that higher for my ability with cardio running. You're going to process oxygen a lot better when that's higher. So not ideal, but there's not much you can do. Testosterone supplementation is really the only thing that's actually going to raise that to a degree. Some of this other stuff, not super important. It's always pretty much going to be in range. The MCV, MCH, all that, RD, RDW, that has to deal with like anemia and stuff. Um, for 99% of the population, that's going to be fairly normal. Uh, you can look at your lymphocyte to neutroph neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, and that will show some degree of inflammation as well. So that's a good marker to check inflammation outside of C-reactive protein. So you want that neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio to be fairly close, as close as possible. Your body is more neutrophils overall, which are a form of white blood cell. They're the most dominant form of white blood cell in the body. Lymphocytes are another form. But the higher that ratio, the more inflammation that your, your body's dealing with. Let's go down, though, to... And eosinophils are allergies. So if you have a high eosinophil count, that is an allergic thing. That has to do with allergies. Glucose 82, that's a really good fasted glucose level. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, again, shows a pretty good degree of insulin sensitivity. And this is coming off the comprehensive metabolic panel, which you guys are going to want to get checked as well. It's like an $8 test. BUN and creatinine are kidney functions. Creat BUN specifically elevates when you're eating a lot of protein. So if that's ever like higher, like you're in that 20 to 25 range, don't panic. It's mostly diet related as far as protein intake. Creatinine elevates with more muscle mass and heavier body weights. So it's not a completely accurate picture, again, if that's elevated. Um, as far as your kidney health, cystatin C is a better metric. Uh, and there's some other biomarkers you can get checked as well, but cystatin C is probably the more of the gold standard. Uh, so creatinine, if you're in that 1.2, 1.3, even upwards of 1.4 range, I really wouldn't worry. Not something I'd be uh, too worried about. Sodium, potassium chloride, those are all electrolytes. Those are pretty much going to be normal for everybody. I wouldn't worry about that as well. Uh, 
AG ratio is a genetic thing that's always been a little out of whack. I'm not super off the charts as far as the uh, the ratio there, but it's a little elevated. Those are proteins in the body, and mine are literally always a little off on blood work, always. So it's just a genetic thing, not going to sweat that too much, and it's really close to the normal range. AST, ALT, liver enzymes, slightly elevated. Those are going to be, they're not slightly elevated, I should say. They were slightly elevated on the last one, the ALT, but they're right in range. And typically, those are going to be in that 20, 30, even 40 range. They do elevate with training, with stress on the body. They can go up a little bit. But unless they're, you know, even above 50, 60, 70, I wouldn't worry too much. You can always take Tudka or N-acetylcysteine for liver support. TSH, 1.78. That's roughly where I usually am. Um, the lower your TSH, the better your, your thyroid is operating. So a higher TSH leads to... Uh, hypothyroidism to a, to a degree. So the higher that TSH number goes up, up the more underactive your thyroid is. So you want that number lower, although you don't want it too low. You don't want to really get below one because then you're dealing with the opposite issue where your thyroid is too high. Let's go down to insulin. I would definitely get TSH checked. So I didn't get T4 and T3 checked because I think TSH is a much more important snapshot of the overall thyroid health. So I would get TSH checked as well, which is like a $5 test. So right there, if we got CBC, CMP, and TSH, we're looking at like a $21, $21. I would throw an insulin. Insulin is an $11 test, so we're up to $32. Insulin is the best metric you can look at for insulin sensitivity or your insulin resistance. You want this number usually around 5 or lower. Um, some people will say below 10 is fine, below 15 is fine, but I would say around 5 is a better area to aim for. I was 2.4 on that last one where I wasn't eating like sugar at all. This one, 5.2, a little higher, but still in a really good range. This is going to be a better metric, but better biomarker than A1C and glucose to show your true insulin sensitivity. The higher this number is, the more insulin resistant you are. So you want that as low as possible. Likewise, let's look at apolipoprotein B. This is a $14 test. So with that involved, we're up to um, $46. So $46, get this checked as well. Mine was 77. That puts me in the top 80th percentile. So my apolipoprotein B is, is essentially lower than 80% of the population, um, according to Peter Atiyah himself. This is a better marker for your lipids and heart health because apolipoprotein B is the carrier mechanism for the bad cholesterol like LDL and VLDL and LP little a. So this is what carries all of those in the body. So if this number is high, there's a lot of transportation of that stuff going on. And this is a better overall marker of your uh, cholesterol. So this is the one that you're going to want to look at. I would get this done, apolipoprotein B, over the lipid panel with LDL. This is far more important. So those are the main ones I would check. And I think that's it. Yeah, those are the main ones I would check. So that's $46. So if you get CBC done, CMP uh, TSH, insulin, and apolipoprotein B, that's five things. With the uh, lab drop fee, lab draw fee, you're at $50. And then you can use my code, which is just my name, Pete. This is on Merrick Health. Um, you're at 45, you're at like $44. So you can get all this done for $44 and get a much better snapshot of your health. You can look at your, your heart health with apolipoprotein B. You can look at insulin sensitivity with insulin, thyroid. Um, function with TSH, and then you get the CMP, kidney, liver functions, and CBC with your uh, white blood cells and red blood cells. So all that is what I would check. The other ones I, I said at the beginning, I kind of threw in at the end because I wanted to see them, more curiosity than anything, but you can get this checked for literally $44. I use Merrick Health. That's Derek's website. Uh, they don't pay me anything. It's literally just the only one where you can go to the website and custom pick what you want to look at. So they have like a thing called Lab Builder. And I'm literally, I'm not getting anything from this, but you can you can go there and custom pick things from them. So that's that's one of the things um, I would look at and you can just pick and choose. And if you wanna add more things in, like the testosterone, like we talked about, LC slash MS, you can do that. So if we added the testosterone check with LC slash MS on this, we'd be up to about 75 bucks, I think, or 80, 80 bucks. So it still wouldn't be terrible, but those are the main things I'd check. This, hopefully helped you guys out if you get value out of this this channel and out of the things i'm trying to help you teach you guys and all the information i'm trying to give you please subscribe comment support the channel tell a friend about the videos pass this information along 
Thank you guys so much. I'm going to keep the content coming.